down with Vision 360 Fire Financials. Hey, today I'm ecstatic to show you guys some pretty cool stuff about dividend growth and how it pertains to you retiring on time. All right, let's not waste your time. Let's jump right in, guys. Hey, so here it is. So I, what I did is I took my portfolio um, and I took my weighted numbers for my dividend growth rate and I took my starting dividend yield, right? So everything is assuming my dividend portfolio, right? Just for easy simplicity for myself to show you this math. And we're gonna do $1 million and $2 million to retire. So if you're in the $1 million category to retire, how much passive income can you drip off of that? And then $2 million and how much and how much you need to put in based off of my given portfolio to get to that point. So if it's not quite what you think, I'll put it that way. All right, so here it is. On the screen, as you can see, the portfolio value, we're gonna say that we started with $100 today, and then my three-year dividend CAGR is 11.03. Obviously, long-term dividend CAGR can vary a little bit. Like my long-term dividend CAGR is just under that. But for this measurement, we're gonna utilize this, right? Um, you know, and it's you know not necessarily unrealistic, but long-term growth, you're probably not gonna get quite this high. So like I said, these are aggressive, a little bit aggressive. So you're gonna to wanna to contribute a little more than this, probably especially depending on your portfolio because your portfolio is gonna yield a different amount. So you wanna check your uh, dividend yield and your growth rate, right? And there's a lot of ways to do that and a lot of trackers out there, including the one right here, which is in the description below and how to get it. So check that out as well. All right, so the share price, right? We're just gonna say is $100. Doesn't matter, right? You don't have to worry about that. It could be $10, $100, right? It's just, either way, it's gonna compound the same effect. All right, so then we're gonna assume a 2% quarterly share price increase, which is not out of the abnormal, guys, over the long term, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're going to say, how much money do I need to contribute to get to, let's say, let's say you're older, right? So let us say that you start at 35 doing this, guys, and you're watching this and you're 35 years old or you're somewhere in that ballpark, how much do you gotta contribute with these values to be able to get to that $1 million? So that's key, right? So if you're only working with 25 years until you're 60, which that's the rule, guys, I'm basing it off of retiring at 60 here, so that's not a super early retirement, but that's when you can draw on your Roth uh, you know, completely tax-free without having to jump through certain loopholes, which by the way, you can do that. If you guys are curious about that, leave me a script, uh, link uh, or, you know, comment about it in the description below and I'll go over some of that stuff as well, if you're curious about it. But like I said, let's get to it. So the million dollars, right? And you only have 25 years to work with. Okay. I already did the math for you guys. So yeah, it keeps things pretty easy. So. If you're trying to retire in 25 years, starting at the age of 35, with these por this portfolio number, you're gonna to wanna to do about $1,800 a quarter, which there's four quarters in a year, three months in a quarter. So that's $600 a month is what you're gonna to wanna to contribute. And like I said, you're gonna to wanna to do a little more than that probably, unless you have a portfolio that returns higher than mine even, in which case you could do a little less. But like I said, these are good conservative numbers. It's always good to shoot further, you know? And so, you know, set your goals higher so that way, you know, maybe you can shoot further at the end and have even a better retirement or whatever you want to do, guys. So $600 a month. Now, with that portfolio value, you would see the amount of shares you'd have, not, yada, yada, I'm not too worried about that right now. Your yield then would be this because your yield on cost has went up, right, <laughs> over time. So then you'd see that you would have an annual passive income of, you know, just about $44,500 basically of annual trip income that you would get off of that, guys. So, not super crazy, right? But maybe you want to live a conservative lifestyle, whatever the case is. That's in today's money, okay? I know inflation exists. Now, let's do something else. Let's say, right, that you want $2 million in that same exact time frame, right? So one would say, oh, easy math, probably just double it, right? Well, you're just about right with that. So you would see if you wanted $2 million, that would yield you almost just under $90,000 in passive income based off of these this portfolio parameters with this, this dividend yield. 
So 90,000 is a lot better than the 44,000. You literally just doubled plus another thousand or so. About, you pretty much doubled your uh, annual passive income, which is smart. That is not a bad deal, guys. And if you're thinking, I can't afford $1,200 a month and you're 35 years old, uh, there's a lot of things that you can cut out of your life. A lot of the fat, right? I'm not saying you're fat, but I'm talking about a lot of the fat, like, you know, extra movies, uh, dinners, TV, you know, things that you go out, things that you spend money on, you can cut that out. And I've got videos on that too, about, you know, how to become successful with that kind of stuff. So maybe go check those out. All right, so now let's say that you are in the bunch, kind of like myself. You're very young and you, you know, didn't start when you're 18, but instead you're like, man, I started this when I'm 25. I'm not quite 25, but let's say you started when you're 25. It gives you some leg room, right? Now, you have a lot of time on your side. So you have 10 more years than this other group had, right? So, easy math here. If you want to get to just a million dollars, right? And that's, that's all you're going for, guys. A million dollars. You're going to be able to have 35 years until you hit 60 years old, right? Because 25 and 35 equals 60. So, in order to get to that point, at the end of the 35th year, if you contributed a quarterly amount, right? Quarterly being every three months, you contribute $500 to that. So that works out to just over $133 a month, guys, with this parameter. Very phenomenal. Now with that amount, you'd see how you'd be dripping more with this portfolio. And you see how it's funny now, obviously these aren't exact, right? So you end up with more than a million. You're almost closer to 1.1 million, but you see how your annual drip is higher and your dividend yield on cost is higher because you had the added value of time. So this person was able to buy a lot of shares over those first 10 years that are then at the end of their time period yielding a lot higher yield on costs because of that compound dividend growth. That's the power of compounding dividend growth when it compounds over decades and years. So that's why uh, dividend compound annual growth rates are important. Now let's see you want to get to, you know, let's say you want to get to two million dollars, right? So the two million dollars, what you do is you wouldn't even have to quite double that, okay? So pretty neat, you just do $950 a quarter, which guys that works out to just under about $317 a month, guys. Um, you know, $316.67 to be exact, but that is not bad at all. Like I'll be honest, if you're a 25 year old, you probably started your career or one that you're actually making more money at recently. And I'm pretty sure you can all afford to put away $400 a month, let's be honest. And by the way, these are all numbers net of any tax, so not considering the tax, right? So obviously, you know, you could hold this uh, in a Roth and there's gonna be some stipulations. For example, you know, the people that have less time on their side, um, you're not gonna be able to contribute that much into your Roth anyways, guys, because it's $6,000 cap limit as the time of this filming, unless you're over 50 and then it's 7,000 uh, for 50 to 60 time frame. So it's just something to think about. But like I said, it's not gonna stop you completely. Remember, dividends are tax qualified and if you make under a certain income threshold, you don't have to pay any tax as a married couple. So if you guys are curious about that, I can also make a video on that. Just drop me a link or drop me a comment down below. Like I said, guys, this is the power of dividend compound snowballing. And the nice thing is that person that was 25 when they started, their yield on cost is almost 6% and their annual passive income yield that they generate, those companies where they sleep at night, where they go on vacation, whatever, generates some almost $120,000 a year. So that is very good, guys. So you just think about that, right? That's the power of dividend compounding. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that kind of shed some, you know, uh, light on kind of, hey, you know, this is the power of time and the power of dividend annual, you know, growth and compounding. So like I said, just keep your hand, uh, you know, I should say, you know, keep your hands to the grindstone, right? But, uh, you know, don't file them away. So, you know, make sure you keep your fingers and, um, you know, you will get there if you stay the course of time, guys. That's the biggest thing. So don't give up and don't let somebody tell you you can't do it. As always, please smash that like button. If you are not already, please subscribe. Drop me a comment. 
you know, let me know where you're watching from. Also, if you've got questions, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.